I told you, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome anywhere. Now get the f out of my bar. Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. Hi, Peanut. I'm gonna need you to come with me right now. Look, lady, I'm not interested. <laughs> All right, well, I'm sort of on the tick tick, so upsy daisy. Here we go. Oh, whiskey dick of the claws. It's quite common in Wolverines over 40. You don't want this. Unless you want to take a deep breath through your forehead, I suggest you reconsider. This Wolverine let down his entire world. <laughs> want to talk about what's haunting you, or should we wait for a third act flashback? Uh, go yourself. Go! Let's go. Yeah! Want to do some cocaine? Hey, cocaine is the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching powder? They know all the slang terms. They have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupted? Even forest bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! Welcome back, everyone. Maximum effort. We have the main trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine. It's got pretty much everything everyone's ever asked for from Wolverine and Deadpool. Like, you wanted no sleeves. He's wearing no sleeves during the trailer. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, way more cameo scenes from a lot of the classic X-Men characters from those Brian Singer X-Men films. We even have a giant Ant-Man head with the giant Ant-Man skull, too. R.I.P. to that version of Ant-Man. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. This is just the beginning. Like they're getting ready to start the press tour in the next month or so. So it's going to be crazy. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer, work our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments. They start at a bar. There's some moose antlers to the side. So it might be in Canada somewhere. There were a bunch of Canada jokes of Ryan Reynolds in a previous teaser trailer they released too, where he was wearing a Ryan Gosling t-shirt and reading a book called The Canadian Mounted. It was like maximum Canada jokes because Ryan Reynolds is from Canada, the Wolverine character is meant to be from Canada, and Ryan Gosling himself is from Canada. There's always a ton of Canada jokes just in general in all the Deadpool movies. But the way they explain this version of Wolverine is that he failed his world in some major way. His X-Men died, not the same way they died during the events of the Logan movie, but they died somehow. Paradox of the TVA just said that he failed his world. So he's getting drunk in this bar. It seems like he gets drunk in the bar a lot, like they're kicking him out. He's not welcome anywhere because he's just getting drunk all over town. And because of his healing factor, it's really hard for him to get drunk. So he's going to be camping out at bars for a long time now. Then Deadpool shows up, he's in his brand new suit from the TVA, his new gear, his new pistols, and his new adamantium swords. He refers to Wolverine as Peanut, who then tells him to get the hell out, pulls his guns on him. Notice on the barrels of his guns, it says smile for the flash because it makes a flash as they shoot bullets. Love the fact that he refers to Deadpool as a lady, like, look lady, I'm not interested. There is supposed to be a lady Deadpool variant of Deadpool in the movie somewhere. Deadpool seems like he's on the clock here. He doesn't have time for Wolverine to wallow, so he's trying to carry him out of the bar, literally, and they get into a little bit of a fight that isn't quite so much a fight. He makes a couple jokes at the same time about Wolverine being old, like Wolverine's over 40, getting the whiskey dick, getting a little drunk, not quite able to get it up fully. Just give him a little Viagra, he'll be fine. And just to show you how low this Wolverine has sunk, he actually welcomes Deadpool, shooting, killing him by shooting him in the head. There's a new version of the Marvel Studios logo, which is red and yellow for Deadpool and Wolverine, naturally. This is a bunch of scenes with them on the Void planet from the Loki series with a bunch of stuff around them. Like, notice the wreckage all around them here. This is meant to be a more complete version of the footage we saw in the last trailer with them fighting around this area. Notice the wreckage of the very large 20th Century Fox logo because they used to release all the X-Men movies, all the Fantastic Four movies because they had the rights for a long time. Not sure what happened to this version of the Fox logo, like what went down in that universe that got this prune, but it's meant to be a meta commentary on Kevin Feige getting the rights back and then recasting all the characters, basically making the Fox brand defunct. Like we're going to prune you, send you to the void where you'll be eaten by a liath. The song that they play in the trailer is Madonna's Like a Prayer. They don't actually give this Wolverine a suit up montage in the yellow suit, but we actually do see him inside the TVA when they're talking to Paradox. So at some point when Deadpool goes to recruit him, he brings him back to the TVA. Deadpool explains he needs Wolverine because he's going to lose all of his friends, but they don't totally explain why that is, what is threatening them. Maybe they're going to be pruned by the TVA, or maybe it has something to do with Emma Corrin's villain character, Cassandra Nova from the comics. 
There's a bunch of footage of her. We'll get to that in a second. It's a little bit later in the trailer. But either way, Deadpool is trying to appeal to Wolverine, help me save my friends and family, so to speak, like the family he made for himself, not biological family, because Wolverine failed to save his in his world. I'm sure at some point during the movie, they'll explain a little bit more about his backstory, like what went down in his universe that caused him to fail his world and his version of the X-Men. Drops a whole bunch of F-bombs. It's not totally clear what the craft behind them is. This might be the wreckage of one of the helicarriers. It doesn't totally look like a helicarrier, but you can let me know what you think it is. Deadpool insults him. Then you see a scene of him on his world near the tombstones of all of his X-Men. Some of the wreckage behind him here is a little bit blurry, like there's part of a blimp in the background. Not sure what's on the left over here, just a little too blurry. There's a couple other TVA agents here operating all these monitors. Paradox explains that this Wolverine is essentially a failure. Then we get an extended fight scene with the two of them going at each other. We actually saw some behind the scenes footage of this earlier this year against the backdrop of the wreckage of this 20th Century Fox logo. And part of the joke here is they both have healing factors and they both have adamantium. Like Wolverine has his adamantium claws, Deadpool has his adamantium swords. So they just hack away at each other for a little while till they both get tired of it because they both heal each of the damage that they deal to each other. Wolverine gets him right in the bits with his claws, like that's gonna sting a little bit. Even though Deadpool does have a healing factor, he still feels all the pain. Who then proceeds to empty his clips, shooting him up. Deadpool breaks the fourth wall again, acknowledging that he is in a fictional movie because he talks about this third act flashback. Wanna talk about what's haunting you or should we wait for a third act flashback? That's often a trope of a lot of movies, not just superhero comic book movies, but all movies just in general. One of the characters of the protagonist has some deep-seated trauma that they don't fully reveal till the third act of the movie. We get a larger battle scene in a street, not sure exactly where this is happening, if it's still on the Void planet or it's on some other Earth. We finally get Wolverine without the sleeves. At some point, it just seems like the sleeves get ripped off. He's not wearing his helmet, though. He will have the helmet in the movie at some point. I think the Copperhead logo is meant to be a reference to Copperhead from the comics, but he's mostly from the Daredevil comics. There's supposed to be some Jennifer Garner Electra Easter eggs during the movie and some Ben Affleck Daredevil Easter eggs, but I think that Electra is going to be the only cameo from those movies. Ben Affleck himself isn't supposed to be in the movie. There's a Rob Liefeld Easter egg in the background here too. It says Liefeld's feet. If you're not a big comic book reader, it's a bit of an in-joke in the comic book community. For a long time, for like the history of Rob Liefeld drawing comics, people have made fun of his feet and the fact that he is not able to draw feet. Rob Liefeld, also one of the co-creators of the Deadpool character, so there's Easter eggs for him in all the Deadpool movies, like he had a cameo scene in the first Deadpool movie. Fabian Nisueza was the original artist, the co-creator of Deadpool. There's probably an Easter egg for him too somewhere in the movie. And notice Deadpool is now wielding twin golden guns, so at some point he also gets another gun upgrade. Not sure exactly where he gets these though. They cut in a scene of Wolverine and Deadpool in the car arguing with each other with Deadpool trying to win him over, explain why he's trying to save his family, why he needs his help. This also explains the footage from the other trailer where the bloody seats in the car and the claw marks all over the place because they get into a full-on fight in the car. There's a little more of the montage of Deadpool killing the TVA agents, still not totally clear why he kills them. Maybe they just go off book or they're trying to prune him at some point. Maybe this is on a completely different planet. The actual woods that they're in when they're in this car ways with Wolverine makes it seem like they're in Canada somewhere in the woods, like where Wolverine has been living on his earth. Then we start to get some scenes of Emma Corrin's villain character, Cassandra Nova. It starts with her coming out of that Ant-Man head. Notice there's Ant-Man's giant skull too. There's a little more footage of Deadpool suit up montage with him getting his adamantium swords, his new gear, his new suit. When he leaves here in the CinemaCon footage they showed off, it's not in this trailer, but in the CinemaCon footage, he actually makes a joke to one of the other TVA agents about this guy giving him the suit up montage, like the armor here being a sexual predator because he pats Deadpool all over his body. Him wearing the white gloves is meant to be a bit of a Disney Mickey Mouse joke, like Mickey Mouse's white gloves, because now technically Disney owns Deadpool. There's a lot of Disney jokes and a lot of Kevin Feige specific jokes during the movie. It's the one thing that Feige said is off limits. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! But I can't. This is just a scene of Deadpool inside the TVA looking like he's explaining something to Wolverine in his new suit. We get a longer scene of them fighting in the car in the woods. We finally actually get some dialogue from Emma Corrin's Cassandra Nova saying boys are so silly, just basically making fun of Deadpool and Wolverine. I've talked about her at length in previous videos. She's basically meant to be the evil twin of Professor X. We might see some kind of Professor X cameo scene or a flashback or at least Wolverine referencing him when he's talking about the backstory of his Earth. 
but it's not totally clear how she wound up on the void. She got pruned at some point, but it's not clear if she's a variant of Professor X that just happened to be born female on one world, or she's actually Professor X's twin from another world. Basically, she's meant to be just as powerful as Professor X, and she can walk too. You can see her fighting Wolverine, just making him move all over the place using her abilities. The logo on her teacup here is a little too blurry, but I'm sure there's another joke here too, some sort of Easter egg in reference. We get a wider shot of Eliath on the void just consuming stuff. He's basically like a galactic trash compactor who can even eat entire timelines. We get a much wider shot of that giant Ant-Man helmet opening with the Ant-Man skull, but there's a bunch of classic X-Men here, like there's Lady Deathstrike, Azazel from the first class movies, confirming that there are some first class Easter eggs during this. This looks like Ray Park's Toad from those original X-Men movies, and obviously we saw Pyro in the last big trailer. This is him sitting on Red Skull's car. This car here in the background is actually Red Skull's car from the first Captain America movie. Some of these characters' faces are covered, so I can't pick out every single person. This car here over in the background on the left is actually a version of the Fantastic Car, but it's meant to be the original version that they used in the comics during the 1960s, not the version from the Fox Fantastic Four movies. So there are Easter eggs from all over the comics, not just from the Fox Marvel movies or the MCU Marvel movies. This scene is happening on the void in someone's cave, which is a bunch of junk that they've collected that's been pruned and put there, with Wolverine getting loaded on a bottle of whiskey, it looks like. Giving you a really good shot of the guns, too, without the sleeves. This is meant to be Dogpool based on the version from the comics. He's meant to be a variant of Deadpool from his world, and his origin story is meant to be a parody of Deadpool from the 616's origin story. So he also has his own healing factor. And I love the look on Hugh Jackman Wolverine's face. Like, he just can't stand this. Like, what is going on here? This is terrible. Big slow motion action sequence. He breaks the fourth wall again, calling out another big movie trope. Big slow motion action sequence. You could probably think of that as a Zack Snyder burn because Rebel Moon Part 2 just came out. And so much of the movie is slow motion action scenes. There's another Easter egg of a bunch of vehicles from different Marvel movies in their convoy here. This tank is a Hydra tank from the first Captain America movie, and these motorcycles are motorbikes that they also drove during that movie. I'm not sure who this character is, but it's probably somebody from those classic X-Men or Fantastic Four movies at Fox. This explosion is happening around a bunch of giant Ant-Man hands, like these are Ant-Man's gloves, but giant size. Cassandra Nova using her powers against Wolverine, controlling him. Their fight scene, the way she finger puppets him, is also meant to be a reference to the first X-Men movie where Magneto does the exact same thing to Wolverine with his power. That remarkable metal doesn't run through your entire body, does it? Also notice some of the room here looks like the dome from inside Cerebro too, like some of the wreckage looks like Cerebro. It seems like they're saying she's commanding this rogue group of X-Men, Fantastic Four characters, other Marvel characters from those other movies. Sort of like her evil band of X-Men, kind of. Deadpool and Wolverine charge them and just start slicing the hell out of everyone. There's probably a thousand Easter eggs in the background here too from all the other Marvel movies. I think this giant skull in the background is actually meant to be the same skull from Hulk's bed during Thor Ragnarok. Not totally sure what's happening here, but this is them jumping out of the Ant-Man skull, like the giant size Ant-Man skull, into a magic portal that looks like one of Doctor Strange's portals. But in the trailer, the way they cut the footage, they say, let's freaking go as they're jumping in. I think it's meant to be a metaphor for them coming to the MCU. Whatever's happening though, it seems like Eliath is about to consume everything here. So this might be them actually escaping to the MCU. Then they end the trailer with a whole bunch of blind owl jokes about them doing blow together. It was just a bunch of different slang terms. And a big Kevin Feige joke, like Kevin Feige said, absolutely no, all the Marvel people, which he's referencing here, there's a list that they have that we can't use any of those things. It's the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching ballet? They know all the slang terms, they have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupted? Even forest bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! White Girl Interrupted is a reference to the Girl Interrupted Angelina Jolie movie. Forrest Bump, reference to Forrest Gump. Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Also another Disney joke because it's a reference to the Frozen movie. Do you want to build a snowman? There's actually a couple extra Easter eggs in the poster they released with this too. So you see Deadpool grabbing Wolverine's claws here, like touching them. It's meant to be a reference to the Logan poster with X-23 grabbing Wolverine's hand. So the big theory is that we'll actually see a version of X-23 at some point during the movie. 
Part of the idea, though, like we saw in the last trailer, is that they are setting up secret wars. So the end of the movie will directly set that up. What they might be doing, though, is trying to say that the Void planet from Loki winds up being a version of Battleworld from the Secret Wars comics. But because of that Doctor Doom Secret Wars comic with God Emperor Doom on it, it's not clear if they're actually using a version of God Emperor Doom for their movie version of Avengers Secret Wars. There's a new Fantastic Four movie that's going to be releasing next year after Deadpool and Wolverine, which is also meant to be a big multiverse movie with Galactus, a bunch of stuff in another universe. But also at some point, they're supposed to feature their version from their universe of Doctor Doom. So it's not clear if this Doctor Doom that they're referencing that will show up during their version of Secret Wars is the version that we'll see in the Fantastic Four movie. Currently, Marvel's plans right now for the next couple of Avengers movies is to still do Avengers 5 as a version of Kang Dynasty. They'll wrap up the Council of Kang storyline with just recast versions of Kang, like it won't be Jonathan Majors. They have not said who they're going to recast the characters or how they're going to rework anything, but they'll just pay that storyline off during Avengers 5. I don't know if Wolverine and Deadpool are supposed to be in Avengers 5 because the way they pitched that movie, it's mostly about the main universe, like the 616 version of the new Avengers versus the Council of Kangs, and it's Avengers 6 Secret Wars that's more of like the multiverse Avengers movie that I think Deadpool and Wolverine might be skipping over to. Just because it seems like Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 will be connected the way that Infinity War and Avengers Endgame were connected, like there was a post credit scene setting up Avengers Endgame, it was almost like one movie just split into two parts. If Deadpool and Wolverine are in Avengers 5, we'd probably see some sort of post credit scene with them in it, or some sort of reference to them. But part of the idea is that Avengers Secret Wars is meant to be Kevin Feige sort of giving all those Fox Marvel actors their own version of Endgame, whereas Deadpool and Wolverine is like a slightly smaller version of that the way that Spider-Man No Way Home was for Tobey Maguire Andrew Garfield's versions of Spider-Man in the classic Sinister Six villains. So think of Deadpool and Wolverine as X-Men No Way Home, so to speak, even though there'll be some Fantastic Four Easter eggs in there too, and Secret Wars as being like X-Men Endgame. We're also in the middle of X-Men 97 episodes. The interesting thing about that is that Deadpool is canon to that original X-Men the Animated Series. It's always possible that we see a Deadpool Easter egg at some point during that. Maybe not this season, but like in a future season. Hopefully Ryan Reynolds would voice the character if we do see Deadpool show up. When it comes to the live action X-Men solo movie that they're working on right now, currently I think that's not supposed to come out till after Secret Wars in Marvel's big reboot. Like during the last big trailer, Deadpool talks about rebooting the MCU. Your big cinematic universe here is going to change forever. That's more of a Secret Wars reference. I've done a bunch of several videos about this, but Marvel's long-term plans are to use Secret Wars as sort of like a soft reboot point for all Marvel movies. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references here. Like you probably watch this like 10 or 15 times in 4K and find more stuff in the background. If there's anything that you spotted that I didn't talk about in the trailer or in my previous Deadpool and Wolverine trailers, write it in the comments below and I'll add to my future bonus videos. They'll probably start releasing some more clips and some more trailers in the next month or two just because the movie's coming out in July and it seems like they're rolling really hard on it. Marvel just released that other CinemaCon Deadpool and Wolverine trailer with a whole bunch of different footage. Kevin Feige also drops a whole bunch of F-bombs. So click here to watch Kevin Feige swearing like a sailor. And click here for that new Captain America 4 trailer also from CinemaCon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one in maximum effort.